Hello, I'm Dr. Susan Heitler, a Denver clinical psychologist, author of Prescriptions Without Pills for Depression, Anxiety, Anger, and More. And I'm talking today with Marilyn Vanderbilt, author of Miss America by Day. Um, Marilyn, who's also my next door neighbor, uh, spent 13 years as an incest victim growing up. And many, many years since that time, going around the country and explaining to people about incest, how to prevent it, how to heal from it, and what it does to people. So, Marilyn, you and I have been talking about what parents can do to be sure that their children are safe from uh, negative sexual experiences in their growing up years, either with family members and more often with other people they meet. What, what do well, parents need to do or say? One of the things that concerns me when I speak is that I don't want to make parents paranoid. Mm -hmm. I, I will add that how many talks have you given? Over 500 <laughs> talks all over the country, yeah. in other parts of the world. It's a great gift that you've done. Go ahead. It, what were you saying a, you it's emphasize? It's a privilege that I have. It, yes. Um, I, I don't want parents to be paranoid. Yes, or to um, make their children frightened yes, and anxious about absolutely. being everywhere. But and I, at the same time... But I will also say there are no safe places. And what do you mean by there are no safe places? Let's just take camp. Summer camp. Ronald Reagan's son, Michael, was sexually mm -hmm. abused at camp, and he didn't tell anyone until his father was president of the United States. It, it changed... His life was just so hard because wow. of this experience. A camp counselor... Um, he was a counselor or a no, camper? he was a, a counselor. A counselor. Molested him. Well, this raises another point. If you have boys, you're not home free. Boys are molested as much as girls. It's are no, certainly not as frequently. No, not as frequently. And with devastating consequences. But more often than we realize. Yeah. Um, we know gymnastics. Oh, that's right. Um so sports is sports. a huge arena. I had a, I just, um, my daughter was uh, on swim team mm -hmm. at a community center a block from our home. And she had a swimming coach that there was just something that didn't oh. feel right about that. And he said, I'll pick, I'll pick you up and take you back. It's only a block. And I said to Jennifer, I know that you love him and just adore him, but I'm asking you out of respect for me. Please never get in the car with him. Please never be alone with him. Hmm. Would you do that out of respect for me? And she said, okay, Mom. Was I right or wrong? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I had a sense. What, and what I'm hearing is that you're also conveying to Jennifer and all the Jennifers in the world that, that children have some responsibility to protect themselves, and there are people out there who are molesters. I, is that an actual conversation you'd have? With daughters, uh, well, with sons. well, what I'm speaking about right now is p parents just having an awareness. Okay, here's a uh, coach. Is he a father of a of a soccer player? Was he a professional soccer player, or is it possible that he's choosing a place w where there are children? I'm not saying uh, that you do this every time you look, but but it's just an awareness, especially if your child is going to be somewhere like a, a camp or an overnight. You know, it's reminding me of I, an experience we had when our kids were early teenage years. There was a voice coach who came to work with one of my boys, and I just had an uneasy feeling. That's it. So I would hang around the room all the time and be quasi-visible. I just didn't feel good about it. And uh, six months later, we heard he killed himself because mm -hmm. it came out that he had been molesting his students. It, it was just a little feeling. So maybe that's part of it. It's part of it. Pay attention. Just pay attention. To that little voice that says, no, I'm just not quite sure here. Yeah. I don't know how you protect the kids when they get to summer camp or when they're at school. Any suggestions there? Um. You watch, I had a woman say on a plane, my daughter, um, the, the, the flight attendant had disclosed to me. And so she, oh, she was listening, she was listening in this conversation. And, uh, and she said, that happened to my daughter. And she was seven and she came oh. home and told me. And I said, really? That's amazing. Um, we got busy doing other things. And as we're landing, I turned to her and I said, so she just came home and 
told you? And she said, well, it didn't happen exactly that way. Uh She changed. She got very angry. So I Uh sent her to therapy, and she told the therapist. So her daughter's behavior changed. changed. Right. So you're just, it's just an awareness. so important. So she didn't go home and tell her mother. Children do not come home and say this. They just don't. Has a child ever, I'm sure. Do most children? No, they don't. Right. And the general principle that if you see a change in mood and behavior yeah. in your children, take it seriously. Take it seriously. There's lots of good therapists out there. They're trained to they are. tease out what is going on. Marilyn, thank you so much. Did you have one other thing you wanted to say? No, other than just, just an awareness. Awareness. Just parents being aware. And communicate. And communicate. Be open. So yeah. they know they can tell you whatever. That's hard. But and I would say also that it's up to parents to launch the topic of inappropriate touching. Absolutely. And sexuality. Absolutely. The kids aren't going to launch it. If you've made it speakable, then they'll be Absolutely. more likely to say, you know, I didn't feel too good about. And that's a good way to ask a child. Has anyone ever made you feel uncomfortable? Yeah. They might be willing to say, well, yes. They might be able to say yes to that. (laughs) And sometimes you can even ask, like, give me an example in your life. When has someone, instead of have they? Yes, I like that. The open-ended what, how, when. I like that. Who, Uh who's ever felt a little squirrely to you? Uh, What percentage of people do you think in growing up have some inappropriate touching? Most. That's what I would have said, 90%, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's um, more destructive for some and less for others and always important to talk about. To talk about. Yeah. Thank you so <laughs> much, Marilyn, for joining us. <laughs>